Hi, I'm Dave. Just how many rapid and ultra-rapid EV chargers do we need in the UK? The government says 500,000. I'm not so sure. Stick around as Dave takes it on. Now, for history, we need to just look back and look at any other examples that would give us a clue. We do need chargers for charging, public chargers for charging EVs out on the road. First of all, some people can't charge at home, they have to charge somewhere else. And secondly, some people do road trips where they go beyond the range of the car uh, return journey and therefore will need to charge on the road. We need rapid and ultra rapid chargers. The question really comes to how many, and for that I'm going to look very briefly back at petrol stations. Uh, a lot of people don't know, but the first petrol station was about 1919. It's absolutely years after the first petrol cars were on the road. Up until then, people just wandered down to the chemist and they bought cans of it. Um, or the hardware shop bought cans of fuel, took it home, poured it in. Uh, 1895 was the first recognised date where cars were on the road. Uh, it was nearly... Uh, 1919 before the first of the petrol stations opened up it was in uh, Aldershot uh, I believe anyway from there 1919 just over 100 years ago uh, petrol stations started springing up everywhere then after that then we started getting motorways and then after that motorway services started springing up uh, where you could buy your petrol or diesel and it's grown from there and it reached its peak in the late 60s, early 70s. And back then we had well over 20,000 petrol stations. Now at this time I was living down in Cornwall and most villagers had a little petrol pump. It was the post office or the local shop and it would have one or two pumps um, uh, just on the forecourt. Uh, and they were horrendously expensive because they couldn't afford to buy in bulk. So the petrol they bought, the diesel they bought, was a higher price. Uh, and so they didn't get a huge amount of custom. But there were some people, I don't know, forgot to, ch forgot to refill the car, came home, it was almost empty. They thought, oh, let's just go put a few gallons in and get us, get us to wherever we're going. So the peak of uh, petrol stations occurred uh, in the 70s and it hit just over 20,000 petrol stations. Over the decades since then, these have all disappeared. First of all, all of the little little ones, the local shop ones, just disappeared. Uh, nobody used them. There was no point having a petrol station there if you only sold three gallons a week and that was just enough to get someone to the next big city to be able to fill up at a sensible price. So gradually these started withering away. They just went into disrepair. And if you drive down any, any main road these days, you'll see loads of, of, of redundant uh, petrol station sites. Most of them nowadays seem to be car washes, but uh, they, they uh, found other other purposes as well but down in Cornwall yeah there were there were dozens if not hundreds of sites uh, which were just abandoned uh, then gradually the, um, the, the 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 oil giants took over this is the SO the Shell the BPs the totals uh, and they dominated the scene through the 80s and onwards uh, and they had a basic monopoly and prices went very high and it stayed high. And then the supermarkets got involved and they thought, well, we can actually do cheaper than that. And we, if we offer cheap petrol and diesel, we can attract people here while they're here. Oh, might as well go shopping. So it was used as a loss leader, uh, even if they didn't make any money on the petrol. If it got a new customer to come and visit their store, that was worth it. So they contacted, they, they buy most of the fuel direct from um, Amsterdam um, on the open market and anyone can buy petrol if you've got sufficient money and volume. Um, so they started getting involved and then they realised that um, there's so much profit to be made, they didn't have to charge those silly prices, so they started cutting prices and then over the next decade or two the supermarkets just dominated everything. Today most of the petrol sold is done through the um, through the supermarkets. Now when it comes to EV charging um, we're on a similar position that we are heading towards just installing masses and masses and masses of public EV chargers. Right, I'm talking here about rapid and ultra rapid, not fast. Uh, there'll be a separate video on fast chargers uh, a little bit later. Uh, but we're talking here about rapid and ultra rapid. So these are the ones used on a road trip. These are the ones you can charge your car whatever power it is, 50 or 350 in less than an hour on any EV.
Um, and so the, the, we're going through a massive boom at the moment. Everywhere I go, I'm seeing chargers everywhere. Installations going in, multiple installations going in. We're looking at one just up the road, Walton Summit, 15 Teslas going in there, B4s. Uh, we were at Birch Services on the M62. Uh, there's 12 Teslas and 12 GridServe on each side of the motorway going in, not yet live. A uh, number have opened up uh, in Cornwall, Exeter. They're, they're just going in absolutely everywhere. And my question really is, do we actually need them? Now, I know everyone will say I don't have any near me that are at a sensible price. Price is a separate issue, I'm afraid. I'm going to come back to that in this video. Uh, but just for the moment, we're looking at numbers. Because when you do a bit of research, what you find is these chargers are not used very often. Now, I know that's no comfort when you're sat in a queue with six cars ahead of you waiting to charge. However, even that charger will be empty at 11 o'clock at night or 7 o'clock in the morning or 3 o'clock in the morning or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Chargers have very specific times when they are absolutely clogged up with everyone trying to get into them. The rest of the time, they are stood there idle not being used. And I know this because I travel the country and all I do is go to EV chargers and I film them. So I've got masses and masses of footage of film of chargers absolutely empty. One recent one, I'll try and put this one up, uh, was one of the motorway services on the M6. I arrived there, I think it was 12 o'clock, I was going to have my lunch there. I was the only car out of 16 chargers. I was the only one charging. Now, when I came back from lunch, uh, car was full, uh, but there were, I think, three or four other cars there. 16 chargers, no more than four being used at lunchtime. And what you find, if you do just a little bit of basic research, is most of these chargers that you queue up at are really quiet for 20 hours a day. Absolutely deserted. You can go there, straight in, choose whichever charge you want, fill up. There's no power sharing. There's nothing. For about one hour a day, it's absolute pandemonium and you're going to queue up, you're going to wait, you're going to probably be power sharing if the power, uh, if each charger does not have the full power allocated to it. Uh, and so you're going to get a really slow charge. And for two or three hours a day, you're going to get there and it's going to be busy, but there will be vacant chargers. And this applies to every single charger in the UK. All of them will have busy times when they are I wouldn't say all of them. Most of them will have times when you are actually very, very busy or even queuing. Most of them will have times when it's fairly busy and all of them will have times when they're not being used at all for hour after hour. Uh, recently, I came back from Birmingham. I was late at night, I think 10 or 11 o'clock. Uh, again, went to an M6 service station. Uh, they had, I think it's 12 charges there. Um, I was the only car. So we don't have a problem with how many chargers we need. We have a, ch a problem with how we use them. If each charger is stood there for a, around about 20 or 22 hours every single day of the year not being used, the problem is not the number of chargers. We got masses of them. The problem is when we choose to use them. And that's a totally different issue altogether. So I see at the moment there's just this helter-skelter run, government subsidies and everything, let's get all these charges in. And I'm already seeing that some of these charges that have gone in aren't being used. We've already seen and filmed some of the charges that have gone in have broken down. This is like a month after they've been commissioned. So a lot of these charges are never going to be used and some of them, which are very expensive price, if they're anywhere near a Tesla supercharger, open to all, uh, which charges about a third of the price, uh, they're never going to be used. And I'll give a couple of examples here. One of these is uh, Gloucester Services. Well, Gloucester Services had the Swalco units with Westmoreland charging, uh, and they were great. They were 65p. They're cracking chargers, beautiful layout, everything else. And then th this last week, Tesla just opened up an open to all V4 supercharger. Now, V4 is important because it means any car can charge there the cable's long enough. V4 
the early ones, the cable was way too short and you sometimes had to use two bays. The V4s don't have that problem. So you have now 12 uh, V4 chargers, northbound and southbound, by the way, these are duplicated. Um, 12 uh, Tesla V4 superchargers. Any car can pull in, most of them forwards or backwards. Uh, some of them, it will make a slight difference. You can only do it one way, but they can pull in. They won't need to take up two bays. They are 250 kilowatts with dedicated power, I'm told by the installers. Uh, so everyone, even if it's full, will get the 250 kilowatts. Have a guess what that's done to the Westmoreland chargers. They're still charging 64 pence. The typical Tesla driver, like me, when I checked on the Gloucester site, um, it's 30p off peak. And it's, I think it's for, it varies at 45 or 50p peak. So even at peak time, when they expect these to be busy and they're trying to effectively deter people from using them, it's still 20% cheaper than uh, the Westmoreland. And at off peak times, when it's down at 30p, uh, it's, it's half price. It's just a no brainer. Uh, the Westmoreland ones are 300 kilowatts shared power, Tesla ones are 250 kilowatts dedicated power. Um, so you have to ask what impact that is going to have on the Westmoreland chargers. And to me, uh, and I'm going to try and arrange an interview with uh, the CEO who I've met before and find out what their actual plans are, but I would say there's only two. One is drop your prices to match Tesla and then let people choose whichever they want. Uh, the other one is to have them not used. Doesn't, uh, you know, if, if anyone out there can think of any better alternatives, uh, you're not going to get Tesla rising, raising the prices because all around them are other Tesla superchargers at lower prices. So Tesla's not going to raise prices. So it seems to me you either drop your prices or nobody uses them. Or some of the comments I've been receiving, People who don't know what they're doing will still use them. They'll pull into the charger and they go, oh, Tesla over there, I can't use those, they're dedicated. Uh, I'll use these uh, Westmoreland ones, they look really pretty. Uh, and they'll pull again, they'll see 65p, oh, that's cheaper than Grid Server Osprey or Instavolt or BP Pulse that I normally use. Uh, 64p, I'm 65p, I'm happy with that. Uh, not realizing that if they went over uh, 50 feet, uh, they could charge at 30p. So it just raises how many chargers we actually need. And my opinion is we already have too many. Um, we have to learn how to use them better. In other words, if you always, always, always go to a charger and it's full and you're queuing, stop doing it. Why would you do it? If I ever went to the supermarket week after week after week and there were massive queues at the tills, I'd go at a different time. Maybe earlier, maybe later, maybe a different day. I don't know what it is, but I wouldn't queue. Now, when it comes to commuting, you've got no choice. If you have to be in work at nine, you suffer whatever traffic is there. You can't change that. You might actually want to talk to your company and see, can you work a flex yard? Can you go in at eight or go in at 10 and do an extra hour or, or the, forget your lunch, whatever it is? You might be able to adjust that. But when it comes to shopping, you've got total control over when you go shopping. And if you every week are queuing up for shopping, I'm pretty much speechless. Why would anyone do that? So with the chargers, we have got masses more going in this year. I think there's thousands and thousands more. These are all rapids and ultra rapids, not just the fast ones. These are all going in at the moment. And most of them will sit there for 20 hours a day, never being touched. Some of them, you'll have a queue there at some peak times and others won't. And the peak times, by the way, they're all different. Um, rugby, for example, uh, Gridso actually pr prints and produce their, um, their peak time. Uh, and it wasn't what I expected. I went there at peak time, what I thought was peak time, to try and film a queue. Uh, I got there five o'clock and it was half deserted. Yet when I checked on the website and they published this information, it said the peak time for rugby is two, two, between two and four. Uh, I'd missed this rush hour. So rugby has a specific time. If you go to Exeter, you'll find bank holidays, for example, really busy. Um, and sometimes this is just a thought. And it actually baffles me for one simple reason, and that is most people only need to charge the car once a week. If you do the average mileage, 8, 10, 12,000 miles, and your car, your EV, will do four miles per kilowatt hour, 
you only need, and it's got an average battery size, a minimum now is about 50 kilowatts, some of them 60, 70, mine's 80, the new uh, Tesla Model 3 performance is 82 as well. So we only need to charge once a week. Now, if you're at home, you can plug in every night, no problem. If you just plug it in, go to sleep, wake up, it's full in the morning, doesn't matter how long it took, there's no queue. But if you always go to the same charger at the same time, on the same location, same day, everything, and you're finding a queue, choose a different time. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you've got any comments as to how many we need or how we use them, please leave a comment down below. If you like what you see, if you want to see more, please subscribe and we can notify you. Click the notification bell icon and we can tell you when we release videos. So thanks for watching. I'm Dave.